In a previous video, I uh, mounted a tablet computer on top of the uh, honeycomb yoke. And uh, although it is a good solution and it requires no computer connection, uh, there are some limitations. For example, you can't take windows that are in the simulator and use them in the panel, as you see here, where the GPS is hidden behind the air manager panel. Also, the screen is just a little bit too small to show a lot of information. So if you've seen a previous video I did on the 15.6 uh, inch flat screen monitor uh, that you see here, uh, that is the monitor that I'm using on this setup. And what I've done is mounted that onto a metal support which places that and the knobster, an all multi-purpose knob which I'll show you, uh, it puts that on, to, on top of the uh, Alpha Yoke from Honeycomb Aeronautical. Now my previous video uh, gives all the details about the monitor so I won't re repeat all that here. You can refer to that if you want the information. Also the uh, knobster is well defined in several of my videos but it is an all-purpose knob that allows the touchscreen uh, to select a knob or knob set and then it can emulate the actual physical knob for inputs into the aircraft simulator. So I think mounting this uh, panel on top of the alpha yoke gives a lot of bang for the buck when you want realism uh, with minimal need to use keyboard and mouse so that uh, your simming experience is as real as it can be. So what I'd like to do in this short video is to uh, show you how I put this together. Some of the, uh, the previous videos I had people have asked me for a little more detail about how, how the project is done instead of just showing it off. So I'm going to just tell you what you need to do to buy and, uh, and how to put it all together. Now I selected aluminum for the material because it's easier to bend and uh, I selected the uh, uh, from Amazon the aluminum you see here this piece was 12 by 24 inches now before I cut the 24 inch side to about 16 inches uh, I would suggest that you lay out your monitor and knobster if you're using that and get an idea how wide you need uh, to make the overall dimension then see where you need to bend it to allow uh, the mounting of the monitor. Then I used the uh, Harbor Freight uh, metal brake you see here, fairly inexpensive, and you need to bend the uh, bottom mounting part back so that the uh, top is up at an angle to match the front of the uh, honeycomb yoke. The result of that bend is something that looks like this. It's just the sheet of aluminum that's been cut, and uh, then I buffed it and got it ready for some paint. Now after drilling the holes for the mounting brackets, the knobster, and a, a slotted hole for the uh, cable from the bottom of the knobster, uh, then I put a nice coat of uh, paint and a clear coat on it and gave it a somewhat nice finish, although most of it's not going to show because it's behind the monitor. Now as for the mounting brackets, I designed those so that they would uh, engage the edges but not cover any more than the bezel. The bezel on this monitor is quite small, which is nice but there's not a lot of grip and also the bottom ones had to be cut shorter so that the uh, buttons on the side could be accessed. Now this design is not quite the final design. I added two more holes on the bottom bracket and I did not use the center bracket uh, in the final product as you'll see shortly. Now I printed the brackets on my 3D printer out of PLA plastic uh, and uh, I will make the uh, STL files available for those who'd like to either print them themselves or send them out to be printed. So here I've uh, mounted the bottom brackets uh, somewhat loosely uh, in place so that I can place the monitor in there and uh, we're ready to install the knobster. Now the knobster can control any knob or set of knobs on the uh, panel just by touching them and using the knob. Now these, uh, this is certainly optional and if you wanted to eliminate the knobster you could shorten the panel up a bit. Now the knobster can be flush mounted in its case and it just happens to be about the same thickness as the monitor so it works out perfectly. Now the final piece of the puzzle is the monitor and that's the big ticket item at $220. Uh, it's a very nice 
monitor. There's lots of them available. Uh, they have the same dimensions generally, but if you wanted to use my brackets, you should make sure that the monitor thickness and the bezel thickness are the same, and also the placement of the controls on the sides. So here is the assembled uh, unit. I used some uh, uh, wing nuts and some nice stainless steel hardware. I think they were at number eight by one and a quarter inches uh, to get through the brackets. And uh, you can see they mount there nicely. Um, you can remove them easily with those wing nuts and remove the monitor if you need it for another purpose. Now here's the unit mounted on the Honeycomb Alpha yoke. I used the uh, four of the six mounting holes on top of the yoke to affix the base on the back. It's quite solid and uh, doesn't seem to move much. You can see I did not use that center bracket uh, that I had printed. Uh, I felt the four corners were plenty secure. I mounted it with the two outer holes and the two inner holes or center holes on the uh, alpha yoke using the screws that were uh, supplied with the yoke. So I think uh, the end result is quite a bargain for uh, $360 or so. You can put this together and have uh, a, a really a mouse-free cockpit where you can fly the airplane uh, very realistically. It gives you uh, a lot of flexibility because with Air Manager uh, there's lots of panels available and you can create your own panels uh, to your liking. It's easy to switch from one airplane to another and uh, with the knob uh, it gives you the ability to just uh, uh, manipulate all the dials in addition to the buttons and switches uh, just using your fingers so it's quite realistic. Now our manager works with uh, prepared FSX, hopefully FS2020 and X-Plane. Now here I'm using X-Plane which happens to be the simulator I like and you can see that uh, you're able to place the GPS windows behind the air, air manager panel so you have good touch control and when you touch the buttons you can uh, you can ha execute the uh, knob functions you can see the yellow selection of the uh, bottom right knob and you can use that to make the entries just like you would with the actual knob and uh, very realistic and good training uh, and gives you a lot of flexibility for using uh, such an inexpensive panel to simulate uh, pretty high level simulation now there's also a G1000 uh, Cessna panel and you can see there we have the uh, full uh, MFD and PFD available uh, again with bezels that are touch control so that you can uh, grab the uh, knob and make entries just like um, like you did on the uh, G530 so with the uh, knob available it uh, you can just select the knob that you want to use for example the coarse barrow knob and then uh, adjust the barrow with the outer knob and the course with the inner knob. And then a heading and you can grab the knob and change the, uh, the heading. You can even press the button to sync the heading. So it, all the knob functionalities are there and it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility as far as cockpit layout. Now one last one I'll show you here is the uh, Vision Jet. Again setting the um, flaps and the parking brake release with fingers only and you're ready to fly. You really can't beat the realism of flying without a mouse and a keyboard. And to try to replicate all these not dials and controls and avionics uh, in a hardware cockpit would cost you a fortune and you're stuck flying the same airplane all the time. That's why I really like the idea of uh, touch cockpits. But uh, they're somewhat expensive and this solution uh, puts it right on top of your yoke so that it's an uh, it's integrated unit if you're going to be moving it around and uh, to be able to, uh, to experience flying in a, in a more realistic way. So if anyone's interested in building this, I'd sure be happy to help you. If you'd like more information, just put some comments in the, uh, in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll be responding and trying to put together a package of information for those who want to try to, to build a unit like this. Uh, with or without the Knobster. Now the Knobster is my baby and I do get a little five dollar commission and uh, full disclosure for every Knobster that's sold but uh, uh, this is my hobby and I'm not trying to make any money but I did uh, I was offered that and I said go ahead just get it out there uh, I like to see 
it be adopted because I think it's really a useful way, uh, inexpensive way, to add realism with knobs in the cockpit. If you like my videos, I'd appreciate it if you'd like this video. Be sure to subscribe and uh, click the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I put a new video out. I look forward to your comments and suggestions. I thank you for spending uh, this time watching my video and I hope uh, you'll be uh, looking at my videos in the future. Thanks and have a great day.